Ash back. Um, that? And a flashback. Nou, zou die doen? Kijk, dat is veelbelovend. En nu de echte test. Ja, hij doet het! Nu gaat de zondag mee een rondje rijden. Hij mannen, fijn weekend. Hoi hoi! Let's go right. Hello, people. Welcome to today's video. As you've probably already seen from the intro, Luke's bike is running again. And you, <laughs> and you also see him riding right in front of me. Um, we don't really have a plan for today. Uh, well, we have a plan for the first bit. We're going to uh, Hook of Holland to get some fried fish or some uh, sandwiches with fish or anything and after that we'll see uh, what, what time it is uh, whether we go back or whether we are gonna do part of our normal home run or something like that but it's really nice it's uh, well, I think whopping 15 degrees blue skies uh, and it's already really good weather for three four weeks now So it's a really, really good start to the riding season in uh, the Netherlands. And it hasn't been this good for the last, uh, I don't know how many years. It's like the sunniest March in. I will put down below in how many years, but uh, maybe one of the sunniest Marches ever. I think we only had one day of rain. So that's also really, really nice. Uh, yeah. That fits. So uh, the fix for Luke's bike was, uh, as we already suspected, or at least as we hope, it is going to be is uh, it's the battery, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so it was already uh, a bit old uh, with 15 years. So yeah, it was still the uh, original battery, I guess. <laughs> so Bike from 2006. So it could also be something with a charging system, but it, uh, probably not. We'll see. If we, if we have an issue today again, then we need to look a little bit more in detail, but uh, well, it should be fine. Nou, ik denk dat ik er niet eens ver vanaf zit, uh, Pijs. Nee, dit is het doen toch? Allemaal van die Alberta's. Ja. <laughs> Ja, die Aras zijn ook gewoon allemaal Fiatjes alleen dan uh, opgevoerd. Uh. Ja. Uit heel Nederland zijn hier geloof ik. Ja, ik zag ook een paar uit België ertussen. Ah, dat vind ik ook zo gaaf en zoiets. <laughs> so, as you may, may have noticed, last winter I've done a lot of modifications uh, on Red Rhino to make it more off-road ready. The main reason for that is the TED ride that I did uh, last year together with my wife. Uh, okay, we go on an adventure. <laughs> Is that feet spot? Don't loop it. Okay. Next. Oh. Riding away in third gear is not a great idea. <laughs> no, but uh, last year I did a ride on the test with my wife, and I really liked that. Um, It gives a new set of challenges riding off-road, especially with a heavy bike. And I have to say, doing it with my wife, it is maybe not the smartest idea to do it for a first time. 
But okay, it's, uh, it gives it a new level of challenges. It's also really nice. So that's the reason why I thought, uh, especially after the crash, let's spend a little bit of money to make Red Rhino more off-road off capable. I don't think we are allowed in here. Uh, I don't know. It's for the level, huh? So, um, the, the last piece, the piece de resistance, is going to be the suspension. Um, I'm still looking at the options, uh, but the only company that offers just a spring is Hyperpro, or that offers a spring that's uh, progressive is Hyperpro. But they advise, to, especially given the age of the bike, mm. let's make a U-turn. <laughs> so, picture. <laughs> yeah, we can we can also make a picture, yeah. So, do we continue it in a f in a few seconds? So, picture is taken. <laughs> I can continue the story. Um, so yeah, the piece de resistance, as I was saying, is the suspension. But the bike is already quite old, it's uh, 25 years old and I'm quite sure, looking at the, at the uh, suspension, that nothing has been done in the 25 years uh, on the, the suspension. So what Hyperpro says is, uh, well, especially given the age of the bike, it's better to uh, put in completely new shocks. But that's quite costly, that's gonna cost me like uh, 11, 1200 euros and that's especially given the value of the bike, which is about 3000 euros, it doesn't make any sense. The spring itself costs about 200 euros, so that's uh, okay, that's a reasonable amount. Uh, yeah, so I'm not really, uh, didn't make a decision yet. My mechanic referred me to a suspension specialist uh, who's able to uh, actually uh, rebuilt the, the shocks itself, so the, uh, not the shock itself, but the dampener. Um, and that's why probably going to be a better alternative. So that's probably the, I'm not sure if that's going to be the next video, or but that will take a little bit of time. But that's the, the last upgrade that I plan to do for off-road riding. Um, uh, yeah, the re as I mentioned, the reason is that off-road riding gives a new set of, uh, of challenges. Um, riding on the road, especially in the Netherlands, uh, it's quite regulated. There's a lot of, uh, no, not a lot of speed limits, but the speed limits are rather conservative. Um, so you're not really able to ride to the limits of your to your own limits or to the limits of the bike in the Netherlands. Uh, and also there's a lot of poles, street furniture uh, and all that kind of fun stuff that you definitely don't want to hit if you crash. So yeah, that's... Uh, and also the riding on the road, there's a lot of people, uh, you have a lot of mixed traffic, like here you have hikers, you have cyclists, you have cars. Um, and yeah, okay, you have to share the road and uh, that's a bit of a... Uh, yeah, you're not, allowed, not able to ride the bike up to, the, to its capabilities. Which is a bit of a, a, bit of a pity. So, you basically on the road you ride to see all the, the surroundings. Which is nice, but at some point, you know, I've seen most of it uh, in, the <laughs> in the direct area of Rotterdam by now. So. And off-road gives a new set of challenges. Uh, so that's uh, nice. Also, the speed's uh, not that that high, so the, the consequences of you dropping the bike not that severe. Or, so that's why I modified the Red Rhino to be more off-road capable. And also on my previous bike, uh, we already did a bit of off-road once in a while because we just pulled the route from A to B. That looked okay, uh, and we ended up on some, to some uh, dirt roads as well, eh? so and the both of us like that also a lot. We, di we didn't turn around when we, we saw the gravel or some dirt, so yeah, it's, uh, 
I think it's, uh, it's nice. Still probably would do 90% uh, on road uh, in all fairness. But I wasn't paying attention. Uh, sorry for the late time. <laughs> for some road we took uh, earlier on, but I don't know where it is. So as you can tell, we didn't plot any routes uh, today for for change. So we're just riding around. The <laughs> we'll see where we end up. Hopefully, at some point at the fish shop to get some fried fish. And oh yeah, uh, the, I also have an update about the Dutch the Dutch thousands. Uh, they moved it by a week, and that basically resulted in us not being able to go because out of the three people, uh, we were only. If, uh, I was the only one left who was able to uh, to ride, and uh, that's not part of the fun if you uh, intend to do it with the three of you. So that's uh, the official event will uh, take us uh, at least another year to get around. Um, uh, probably we will ride uh, either this year's route or last year's route by ourselves uh, some someday this year. So that's a bit of a, a bit of a pity. Uh, we don't have any plans yet for the summer holiday. That will come up. Uh, uh, we'll probably arrange something or make a plan for that, uh, say the coming month. Another thing, I ordered some cones to do parking lot drills again. Because last year I mentioned that uh, I, we got our license. How many years ago, Luke? 11 years? 12 years? Uh, I think it was in the 13. So, no, uh, earlier on. I think you know, I got my, my big license, so it was two years earlier. So 11. 11. 11 years. And I don't think anybody, uh, any of us ever did any uh, parking lot thrills after that. Quite sure. I didn't. <laughs> so, I ordered some cones online. Uh, they were back ordered, so that's going to take another four weeks before the air but then I'm gonna revisit the parking lot rails a bit see if I can still do, do the uh, emergency brake and the swerve and all that kind of fun stuff and I think the, the ones that will struggle with the most is going to be the slow speed stuff <laughs> so figure eight uh, u-turn uh, and uh, slow weave but uh, so it's uh, something we're going to practice as well. So that's uh, something to well, look forward to as well. It's also a pretty nice road. Bit of a blind corner, but okay. And of course this year we also intend to do a few of the, of the demo rides again. That was really fun last year. So we have to do a bit of digging what... Uh, what, it, what is available or what's being organized. Uh, yep. But I saw that there's uh, there's gonna be a BMW dealer tour for the R80, for R18, sorry. The classic and the, the Heritage, and I don't know which, uh, which other models they have, but that's uh, gonna be fun because I didn't have the chance uh, on the Harley Davidson demo tour to I had one of these uh, more classic uh, bikes, so uh, the, the R18 also falls in that category, so that, that's going to be nice. Fietspot, niet gezien. De fietspot? Ja, de fietspot. Ik heb toch een fietspot? Is dit een echte fietspot? Het is echt een fietspot. Oh, er omkeren? Ja, keren we om. <laughs> Dat bordje heb ik niet gezien. Oh, dit ronde hier. Ja, dat ronde bordje. Die heb je gemist. Ja, dat heb ik gemist. Ja, jij hebt helemaal gelijk. Zo, we made it to Hoek of Holland. You see some ferries over there. Those go to England or the UK. It's actually quite close by us. <laughs> so 
so we just finished lunch. The intended uh, fish shop was closed. There was a big bazaar of all second-hand stuff being sold. So they, did, they were not open. So if we, we sit somewhere else, oh, I was also fine. And now we are gonna continue our adventure to wherever we <laughs> wind up. But we're close to the sea now, so it's actually quite chilly here. But still lovely weather to ride. Uh, one more down. <laughs> <laughs> So this is the Oostra, I have a full video of this piece of road on top, here somewhere, if you want to see the full, the full road. Really, really nice road to ride. Oh, Roadkill. And as you see, it's a lot busier than when I rode it for the video. And this is a road we used to come a lot when we just got our license practice overtaking cars because the speed's not that high here and it's a bit more manageable with the uh, 25 kilowatt bikes we had back then the last part of our ride today is going to be the rotte full, full video of the rotte is up here somewhere wherever actually quite lucky there's nobody in front of us didn't expect that And this is a tip, typical fun huh, for, for <laughs> this is what it's all about, uh, riding motorcycles or uh, riding bikes. Just being out there, having fun, riding with good company. What else do you want? <laughs> oh, oh. <Ooh. laughs> So we're going to head home now, that's it for this video, if you had fun thumbs up and I will see you the next time, bye!